welcome to Shepherd's Purse Cheeses. I'm Caroline Bell, um, I'm Judy's youngest daughter. Judy was the founder of Shepherd's Purse Cheeses and I, we, we now run Shepherd's Purse. My sister and I now run Shepherd's Purse, um, my sister Katie. So we're all here in the offices today, but we did think about all three of us trying to do a live together, but I think we'd need more than 30 minutes. So um, I drew the, the straw. I won't say if it was the short straw or the long straw. And I'm here and the guys are in the other room and they may pop in to say, um, to say hello um, a bit later on. Um, so first off, I just want to say a huge thank you. I don't know if you guys have managed to tune into any of the other sessions on the weekend, over the weekend, but I've seen quite a few and I think it's been fantastic, such a fantastic weekend. So I want to thank um, Tracy Colley, who's here somewhere in the comments, I just saw her, Patrick, the Academy of Cheese, uh, Specialist Cheesemakers and the Guild of Fine Food, who've all come together to kind of make this event happen and all the contributors so far have been brilliant, which is probably what's contributed slightly to my nerves of doing this session today. Um, that and the fact I haven't done a tasting for so many weeks due to the lockdown. So we'll see how it goes. The plan today is to try and tell the history of Shepherd's Purse through our cheeses. So I've got all the cheeses here on the table. I'm gonna try and man the camera and lift the cheeses up so that you can see. So I'll tell you a little bit about, um, about the beginnings of Shepherd's Purse and then how we evolved as a company, how we began making blue cheeses, some of the challenges that we've faced throughout the history and our history. And one of the, one of the, the kind of projects or one of the cheeses that's kind of played a really key role in our history from the very beginning to today is our fettel cheese, which used to be called feta. Um, and then we had to change the name and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And then we've recently just uh, very quickly launched a new format of our fettel cheese, which I'll show you later. Um, and we'll, I'll tell you the full story. So without further ado, I'll get started. So um, we're here on the farm in Thirsk in North Yorkshire, and that's where Shepherd's Purse was founded back in the 1980s. So um, it's found, it was founded by my mum, Judy Bell. We're a mixed arable farm and we're fifth generation farmers. And now on the farm, we're second generation cheesemakers. It was when I was old enough to go to school, so I'm the youngest of four children, that mum decided that bringing up four kids and helping out on the farm wasn't a big enough challenge for her. Um, so of course she took, a, took another job at an osteopath's part time. And it was when she was working there that she discovered that more and more people were, be, were becoming diagnosed as, as, as cow, uh, with cow's milk allergies. And at that time, they didn't really have many alternatives. So, so um, it's quite high side, sorry. I've never done this with the comments as well. Um, so it was, so people were get, being diagnosed with cow's milk allergies and there weren't that many alternatives um, on the market for those that did suffer with cow's milk allergies. So at the same time, the Ministry of Agriculture were encouraging smaller farms like ours to diversify. And when mum started learning more about sheep's milk, that's when she when everything started to come together. And um, obviously she did a big business plan and worked out how that was going to work out over time. Um, of course, anyone that knows Judy knows that that absolutely isn't what she did. She actually just went out and bought five sheep and started cracking on and seeing what she could do. So as a six stroke seven year old at the time, um, I remember my memories of it are mum experimenting with ice, uh, sheep's milk ice cream. The sheep's milk itself is delicious, um, but then we'd be, she'd be experimenting with yogurts and ice cream and flavored yogurts. And the cheese making came just slightly after that. So she was starting experimenting with cheese from sheep's milk because sheep's milk is fantastic for cheese making. Um, and then she, um, she she joined the local regional food group and that's where she met Les Lambert from uh, Fountains Dairy. It's now it's now part of Wensleydale Cheese at Kirby Malzett. But Les came, Les was quite excited to hear about this crazy lady making cheese from sheep's milk because the sheep's milk Wensleydale had disappeared from, from Yorkshire, from, from anywhere at the time. And so he was really keen to get his hands in a vat of sheep's milk. So he very kindly came and mentored, um, mentored mum on a, kind of a weekend. 
and they made a Sheep's Milk Wensleydale together. So that was one of our first cheeses and our other couple of first cheeses were Old York, which is a fresh Sheep's Milk cheese and and it was Yorkshire feta, it was actually, the packaging didn't look the same. It was very much produced, we, very, we produced Yorkshire feta in wax chuckles like this, and we continued to produce, produce um, Yorkshire feta in wax chuckles like that until very, very, until this last few weeks actually. But those were the first cheeses that Mum ever produced, and with the help of her mentor, Les Lambert. And Les, uh, encouraged mum one of the, the the two things that he encouraged her to do in that year it was 1989 by now we'd done we'd tested a lot of cheese I think we'd made lots of mistakes and we'd fed the pigs lots of cheese uh, there's lots of work goes into developing a new cheese and it doesn't always go right so lots of experimenting has happened and now we're in 1989 and he encouraged her to do two things one was put your cheeses into competition competitions are really important for cheese makers and the second, the second thing was um, to, and to um, sh exhibit your cheeses, go to shows. So that year was a pivotal year for us. We went to the Great Yorkshire Show in the July and we launched Shepherd's Purse Cheeses. And that same month, he encouraged, uh, Les also encouraged mum, he took our cheeses over to Nantwich International Cheese Show and mum was like, well, you're crazy, you're not going to do anything, it's a bit soon, but if you, um, if you want to. So he did, and, um, and the Yorkshire show first went really brilliantly. It went well, but we were, what we learnt at that first show, and obviously I was, very, I was quite young still, but, um, and I probably remember subsequent shows, I probably don't quite remember the first one, but definitely in subsequent shows as well. We were really proud that we were making a, um, a cheese from sheep's milk. But the Yorkshire folk, um, maybe of the Great Yorkshire Show, and the farmers who told us we were crazy for doing it in the first place, maybe weren't quite ready. So we were put pictures of sheep on the stand, like really beautiful, like lovely pictures of sheep and sheep milking. And sometimes people would try the cheese and they hadn't quite looked at the stand first, and they'd try the cheese, and then and they'd be like, oh yeah, that's nice. And then they'd see the sheep and they were, were really put off at the time. Um, that was kind of in the in as I say late eighties and early nineties, um, and so we we learned that we really had to let the cheese speak for itself to start with. I think now it would be very different. I think people, food cultures moved on so much from the late eighties and early nineties that I think obviously now it's a fantastic thing, and I think our marketing from then would work a lot a lot better from now. But then, um, but, but still, we'd launched the company, and 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 that's that that was fantastic. Um, then Nantwich is later in July, so I think Mum tells the story that she was she was here making cheese um, when she got the call from Les Lambert to say that um, Old York again that's this one. So Old York had picked up a gold medal, and I think she nearly she said she nearly fell off a stool because she's quite short, so she has a stool to be making from the vat. Um, she's in the other room, so I'm feeling brave saying things like that. Um, but um, yeah, she says she nearly fell off a stool. And I think that was really important for, for mum from a confidence point of view. Um, I think it showed that, that the, she, we all really enjoyed our cheeses, but I think that showed that, um, that other people, that they were good cheeses and really gave us confidence as a family to kind of carry on. Not that we would have, we would have not carried on anyway, but it really gives you confidence that what you're doing is, is, a, is a really kind of, good and worthwhile thing so and I think that that kind of idea that we make cheeses that we love ourselves um we would and, and that and that's and that's kind of carried on throughout our history and uh, and so I think that's as, as we move on through the story uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more so um that first year was fantastic and we launched the products out into the out, out into the market and dad would drive around the dales um, selling cheese to the little shops that existed then and booths were also one of our very first customers way back then um, and um, and the company grew and grew and our flock of sheep grew so um, it grew to around about 400 sheep and we still needed more milk in the end which was fantastic so we started buying we started we, we developed a little group of Kind of satellite producers as well and we developed a process for buying in milk 
And, um, and it was once we developed that process for buying in milk too, that, um, that we realised and we were becoming known in, as, as the 90s kind of ticked on, we were becoming known more as artisan cheese producers rather than producers of, uh, of cheeses and products that were available for people who were intolerant to cow's milk. I kind of glossed over that bit maybe at the beginning a bit too much, but it was a really important part of our story of what drove our company to start with. Um, but we do realise that not everybody is, is intolerant, obviously, to, to intolerant or allergic to cow's milk. So um, that's when we were thinking, well, maybe we could introduce, as we were growing as, a, as, a, as cheese makers, maybe we could introduce um, cow's milk too. So we thought, well, if we do introduce cow's milk, what type of cheese would we like to make? And, and my, my brother and my mum were thinking about it. And again, it comes back to what did we enjoy and have in our, in, in our fridge and we felt, what, what did we feel there was a gap there for? And we kind of really enjoyed um, kind of the mellow, creamy blues like, like Sanagur. And at the time, there weren't, um, there, I think there was a couple of small producers across the country, but not many. Um, and we thought, actually that's, actually, that's something that we'd be really proud to try and make. Um, if we thought that making the original cheeses was difficult, you should have seen the development cheeses that came out of the of trying to make a blue cheese and figure out how to how to make blue cheeses. Um, it was it was it was yeah it's a difficult it's a difficult process. Um, but but the first so the first cheeses we made was uh, a, a used milk blue. Once we started experimenting with blue, we did start straight away with used milk and cow's milk, and we started with Yorkshire Blue ewes and Yorkshire Blue cows and it wasn't until 1997 actually that we rebranded the ewes milk one Mrs Bell's Blue. So I'll just show, I'll try and show you them without it falling over. So this is the cow's milk, this is the cow's milk, the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Blue and it's absolutely fantastic at the moment. In fact we've been eating these cheeses as we cut them up and uh, they're all absolutely bang on at the moment. Oh, I might have ruined it. Is that okay? Is that, are we back okay? Um, so I'll show you a piece. So that would be your Yorkshire Blue. You can see the golden colour of the cow's milk. It's so soft and creamy. Um, and that's kind of the characteristic of our blue cheese. I'll just get a different knife. And the Mrs Bell's Blue, you can tell, is much whiter in appearance. But still that soft and creamy um, nature so these cheeses have been out probably for about an hour um and they're all really warming up and i think that's a key thing uh for cheeses in general is you would always want to you would nearly always want to get them to room temperature before you serve them and that allows you to experience the full texture and flavor of the cheese um and the, uh, and i think that once we produced these i think we were we were really excited to get them to get them launched and get them out there, and 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 um, they really took our business. They really made our business take off of almost to another level. So when we we launched it in 1994 first, and I think we kind of as I say, we it took us a few years to redevelop Mrs. Bell's Blue, relaunch Mrs. Bell's Blue as Mrs. Bell's Blue. But in the 1990s, they picked up some um, kind of quite big awards and really took our business to another to an, to another level. As I said, um, but that confidence in cow's milk really really kind of um came to came into its own um so we we looked to expand on the farm uh, to to match this production and um we built this beautiful building that we're in now which has our offices but downstairs most importantly it has a bigger production area so mum moved out of a production area that was um about the size of um two maybe three front rooms into this into this quite big cheese hall so that we could produce far more cheese and that that building started i think in 99 so 2000 and we've not long had it up before the um 2001 um the foot and mouth crisis happened so we just made this kind of big investment in the company and in in our production and then we had this uh, kind of big foot and mouth crisis so so um it was really different really really quite i mean challenging isn't really the word it was traumatic in every way i think farm any farmers on here that remember it, anybody actually maybe not just farmers but for farmers it was particularly traumatic for us it meant that by then what we'd done is we'd we'd um 
somebody that we were buying our milk from, our, our sheep's milk from, had taken our flock because we had struggled to manage uh, producing the milk to the quality we wanted, plus making cheese, uh, expanding the cheese. So they'd taken our flock and they were paying, paying us back in the milk. And um, we had, the, as I say, we had a few satellite, sat satellite sheep milk producers as well around us. And in 2001, uh, we lost all of the Whitby flocks. We lost our original flock and we lost a, a couple of our satellite producers flocks as well. And it was a traumatic time. Obviously that meant no more, no more sheep's milk cheese. First off, it was the trauma of, of, of it because they didn't actually have foot and mouth. They were just, uh, we lost them in a contiguous cull. Um, and then trying to build up, build back from that, um, dealing, working with our farmers. And some of them just didn't want to come back in after that, after that situation hit, which was totally understandable. Um, so, and we just expanded, obviously. It took us probably five years to recover from, from, from that situation as a business. It was... Um, yeah, it was it was it was difficult and yeah, heartbreaking. I've just seen a comment. It was uh, heartbreaking's the the right word. So our sheep's milk business really took a took a took a hit there as well. Um, and but it didn't stop us being the most passionate. We knew like we worked hard to get it back, and that's where Simon Stock came came in and started supplying us with sheep's milk and helping us get back on our feet from a sheep's milk point of view. Um, and we built back through kind of that, that really difficult decade, really, from 2000 to 2010. Um, in that time, Katie, my sister, probably started to take over. Well, a few things happened, actually. Um, first of all, we introduced buffalo milk. Um, so in 2003, a local farmer of ours, uh, just in North Allerton, which is one of our closest towns, started... Um, making cheese from oh well sorry he started with water buffalo because his son was suffering from cystic fibrosis for the same kind of the same reason in a way water buffalo milk is is better for people suffering from cystic fibrosis and um so we we he, i think he spoke to us about whether or not we'd try with the milk and we did and um absolutely fell in love um thanks Alison <laughs> halfway through Absolutely fell in love with um, water buffalo milk. It's it's fantastic. It's an it's an amazing um, milk to work with. I'll show you our buffalo blue and Nigel Barden featured it brilliantly on uh, on Friday night on his cheese and bevies at Nigel's. Um, but water buffalo milk is is such a is such a beautiful milk to work with. And as a blue cheese, um, it's a kind of trademark signature, soft and creamy. But it, it's got this beautiful kind of really light texture on the palate as it as it disappears at the end. Um, really, really, really beautiful milk. Um, in the end, Langthorns at Northalton um, ended up moving their moving their herd over to meat rather than milk. But we'd fallen so much in love with the milk that we had to find an alternative, and that's where our buffalo Bob Bob Palmer stepped in, um, and um, and we ended up with a fantastic supply. And we're really proud to have this cheese back in the stable um, with Buffalo Blue alongside all of our other blue cheeses. Um, and, and, and then Mum was starting to think about taking a step back from, for, from the business. She's always been heavily involved in the local regional food groups after being so kind of um, after being so grateful for their existence when we were starting the business. And she was heavily involved with lots to do with that. And Katie, my sister, really, ste really stepped in to kind of take on cheese making a little. And it was while she was um, beginning or, or getting more into the cheese making side of it that she developed um, one of my favourite cheeses. They're all my favourites. It's like it's like kids, I think. <laughs> Is um, it, and she developed Blooming White. And I'm just going to have to use the camera again. Try and use the camera again. So I've just cut into it. I was going to cut into it on the screen. Have you? Can you see? Can you see? So this is this is blooming white. Oh, can you see? Quite hard to man. So blooming white is this beautiful blue mould ripened cheese, um, made with cow's milk again. But we don't, unlike with the blue um, with normal blue cheeses, we don't pierce the cheese. Um, we let it we let it ripen in these in these small truckles, and we do a bigger truckle, a slightly bigger truckle. But it's got, it's still got that kind of little bit of a kick of the blue. Um, so, 
uh, so um, yeah, it's, it, it's mellow and mild, like, like our cheeses in relation to other blue cheeses are all fairly mellow and mild, apart from, apart from one which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, and, but it's got that beautiful texture. But I'm not going to lie, actually, Blooming White, we, we, we developed that and I think we launched it in 2008, unless I get a shout from the, from the, other, from the other room, maybe earlier, but I think it was 2008. Um, and and, it, and it's been well received, but it's been a bit of a difficult child. It's a very difficult cheese to make and get right, and it's been a bit difficult. Um, we think we're getting there, although I want to touch wood and I don't want to jinx anything. Um, I think we, I think we are, we are, we are making progress with it um, to be able to make it much more consistently. It's always been a fantastic cheese, always been one of my favourites, but sometimes difficult to make, to make, um, to make consistently. So, but we're getting, I think we're getting it all these years on, and I think we're not far off getting there, which is amazing. Um, and then, uh, as we were getting into the late, like the. T t 2010 I was the youngest of the four of, of the four of us so there wasn't really we, as a growing small family business there certainly wasn't room first generation for me to come kind of straight from school or college back into the business and I went away and worked and um, worked elsewhere it did, did university and stuff and, and worked elsewhere um, but it was coming to the stage where mum was stepping back as I said Katie was stepping in in production and we were working together on weekends when I wasn't working when I wasn't at work my work and then um, and in 20 we decided I think 2012 it became the point where we're, this is the time this is we need to kind of step in let mum step back entirely and both Katie and I can step up and and um, and um, take on Shepherd's Purse entirely so so um, Katie had a cheese in development and it was called Harrogate um, well we didn't have a name actually um, but it was this one. It's not. It was called. Har it's now called Harrogate Blue. And um, part of the reason for the name is I. I normally not at the moment. I live on a farm at the moment. But normally, I live in in Harrogate, and um, I have lived in Harrogate for uh, nearly ten years, I think. So, I was living in Harrogate when we were launching this, and that's where the name came from. It's our local town. It's been a town actually. It houses fodder and the cheese board and lots of other great retailers and it's been a fantastic support for us as Shepherd's Purse as we've been growing as a company and um, and so yeah this this was this was Harrogate Blue we launched it in 2012 um, we really kind of refocused our business and looked at kind of what we what we were all about and I think we're still about that today we're about absolutely top quality blue cheeses and sheep's milk cheeses well sheep's milk water buffalo milk cow's milk we specialise in blues and we have this fantastic kind of history and legacy and passion for our sheep's milk cheeses as well. Um, the last cheese before I talk more, I guess, about fettle and maybe take some questions um, is, is Northern Blue. So that one, so one of the gaps in that, that people have asked, you know, most people we're converting with our blue cheeses. Um, people say they don't like blue cheese and we say oh like, please just give it a try and if you don't like this then we'll you know we'll let you we'll leave you to it and um you really don't like blue cheeses but if they do if they're brave enough to try they'll often say oh yeah that's actually that's that's I, I like that that's not like the blue cheeses i may have may have tasted or they may have memories of tasting blue cheese when they were younger when their palates were a bit more sensitive and it made them never take chase blue cheese again but the creaminess and mellowness that's how our blue cheeses kind of roll normally um and and one of the things we were starting to get was uh have you got anything a bit stronger so northern blue is really our, our slightly stronger uh version so we use a different strain of penicillin rock forte and penicillin rock forte is the blue mold culture that makes a blue cheese blue and there's different strains of it we use a different strain for that we lengthen the maturation profile um and uh, it's got that little bit more kind of kick. We we say it's made with cheese from hard as nails, northern cows. Just that it's called northern blue. A little bit harder, a little bit stronger than um, than 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 it's for the cheese, Yorkshire blue. I'm being told there's five minutes left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a plea and tell you a little bit about the story. So feta, as told you about um, feta earlier, the first cheese that we ever made, um, and. The history, and we made it as Yorkshire feta until a letter dropped on our desk from the Ministry of Agriculture in 1996 
telling us that we were going to have to stop calling it feta because of the PDO um, application from the Greeks. Uh, it took, we, we really fought hard to try and save the name over many, many years actually. It wasn't until 2007 that we finally got word that we'd have to change the name from Yorkshire Feta. We couldn't use that name anymore. We knew that it was going to impact on the market because people wouldn't know what it was as easily. Because uh, don't forget we were making it in waxed rounds like this. But chefs love our the feta cheese. Um, it's 100% sheep smoke. It's fantastic quality. But we fought really, really, really hard and it wasn't until 2007 that we had to change the name. We tried loads of things. We, we tried to publish, I can't believe it's not feta, um, feta with a PH, but they weren't taking any of that. The name that we came up with, thanks to our, our community and people in Yorkshire, was Fettle. And it's a, it was an amazing name. Um, it, it's a Yorkshire name. Uh, it means um, to fettle something is to solve something and to be in fine fettle is to be in a good state. And that's what we strive to be. It was a great name for kind of overcoming this challenge of changing the name from feta. And, um, and, so, and so Yorkshire Fettle began in 2007. We invested a lot in kind of trying to let people know that it, that's, it was feta. Um, and, but we always knew that the way it was packaged kind of limited us. So we always had this idea in our mind to package it more like a feta. And, and um, we finally, in, a, in, in January, February this year, we started preparing for a potential summer launch of this cheese. And then when the coronavirus crisis hit, um, I, I spoke to my, the, our, our sheep milk farmers via Simon Stock shortly after the uh, food service had, had, um, had been ordered to close and he was in dire straits. He told me that they, we were only one out of two of his normal 22 producers left doing anything and he said, Caroline, please don't tell me any bad news. And I wasn't ringing him for bad news actually, I was ringing him to sort of tell him we were fighting hard for our sheep smoke and we knew the situation because as I say we've had sheep we've been heavily involved we've suffered with losing our sheep smoke supply before we wanted to support our sheep milk farmers after speaking to Simon I spoke rather the team here and said listen I know it's a risk and I know we've we've got a fridge full of cheese that isn't going anywhere at the moment but we could take more cheese and lay it down into feta if we make it in this way and if we can get this product live if we can take that risk and we can get this product live then, then it's a great format. We've always believed in it. We've always believed in this format. So it, it, from that moment of talking to Simon, I then, we then start talking to our creatives and our packaging people saying, how quickly could we make this happen? Our finance people here, to be fair, told us we were mental trying to think about A, investing more money and B, investing money in things like packaging and, and launching a new product into this market. But we believed in it and it would enable us to try and help to keep our sheep milk farmers going. Um, and, and so um, I'm so proud to say that we managed to do it and we launched um, this with, thanks to amazing work from our creative teams and amazing work from um, our packaging people and, our, and everybody involved in trying to get the, in getting this done um, and getting a landing page done and everything done. We managed to launch it on, on um, Monday the 4th of May um, and we're so proud and really really proud to, to, to announce our, our retailers have been incredibly supportive as have people buying from the website it's been fantastic since launch and I'm really proud to say it's going into Booth stores and it's going into Morrison's Yorkshire stores in the next uh, few days or coming weeks we're moving as quickly as we can and I can't thank our retailers enough enough for their support but we really need you and we do need you to be to buy it so that we can commit to taking more sheep milk and so that we can work through our store full of cheese it's we've still got a store full of cheese we're still working through it uh, this weekend has really helped but we 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 do need um we do need more help so um I think um the the links have been posted in the comments. If you could please go along, tell your friends and share, um, share, share with your friends and let them know. And hopefully we can save these sheep milk farmers who have started drying off. I'll maybe do another live to go into more detail of this because I know I think I'm at time. Um, so I think we'll do another live. I don't want to eat into other people's time. Um, but um, thank you for thank you for um, listening and um, and thanks for and we'll put all the links in the comments and thanks again to the Academy of Cheese, Tracy Colley, Patrick McGuigan, specialist cheesemakers 
I think we've put in the comments as well the directories for all the cheesemakers because it isn't only about us. I've shared our story today, but it's all the cheese, all the specialist cheesemakers in the UK are in a, in, in a similar boat. Um, so please go and, and take a look and support the small cheesemakers. And um, thanks again for um, for this weekend and thanks for joining joining us. So okay, I'm out. Um, thank you very much.